Okay. We're going to try to get back on schedule. So I need everyone to calm down. Shh. All right. Okay. Hi. I'm Kate Blystone. I'm the outreach manager for the Pipeline Safety Trust. I'm new. So be nice. <laughs> So welcome to our NGO um, focus, what do NGOs want? And um, this was decided before I started, so I, uh, I had to ask Carl what that meant. So here's, here's the sentence. Uh, so, you know, this morning we have speakers from nonprofits who work regionally and worldwide in the case of you guys, right, EDF. Um, we've invited them to talk about why they're involved in these issues, what their concerns are, and what they're currently working on, and what they hope to see in the future regarding pipeline safety. So we'll hear, hear from each of them for a little while, and then I'll open the floor to questions, depending on time, and the goal is to get you out by 12.30, so you can eat food. So that's good. So first we're gonna hear from Holly Perrin. Holly's a senior attorney with the Environmental Defense Fund's U.S. Climate and Energy Program. She focuses on oil and gas regulation and policy. Then we're going to hear from Mike Schreiber. Raise your hand. There you are. Um, who is the regional executive director of the National Wildlife Federation's Great Lakes Regional Center. And his fo work focuses on the Great Lakes protection, uh, energy policy, and campus sustainability. And then finally, we'll hear from Brad McLean. He's a senior attorney with the Southern Environmental Law Center in Charlottesville, Virginia, where he focuses on litigation and advocacy to address surface water and groundwater pollution from coal ash, among other things. So we're going to start with Holly and then everyone else. All right, here you go. Thanks, Kate. Um, so if you guys hear a tremor in my voice, it's because I'm shivering. And if anybody uh, needs to get up and like do some jumping jacks or whatever uh, to warm themselves up, I totally understand. Uh, make yourselves comfortable. Um, but thanks so much for having us. Uh, EDF, like Kate mentioned, is an international um, nonprofit with about a million and a half members worldwide. And we really try to focus on um, environmental or economic solutions to environmental problems where possible. And um, before I go further and, and sort of jump into our agenda, I need to give credit where it's due. Um, EDF is a relatively new entrant into pipeline advocacy, and um, we owe a debt of gratitude to the other NGOs that have been operating in this space for a long time um, very effectively. So specifically, PST has done an incredible job of um, advocating on pipeline issues for a very long time. And both personally and I think generally, their level of technical savvy has been incredibly helpful, you know, both in, in shepherding along other groups, but also in establishing a very productive dialogue. And then the other um, NGOs on this panel and operating elsewhere, like Alexis, um, who just spoke, and the Northwest Landowners Association in North Dakota, um, the efficacy of their work really allows EDF to come in with a narrow methane-focused agenda. Um, and uh, we're very grateful for, for everything that they're doing. Um, so that said, I'll just you know very quickly and briefly answer the question, and that is, EDF wants FIMSA to uh, leverage its existing environmental authority to reduce methane emissions from uh, natural gas pipelines. And also, um, from the industry, uh, EDF wants to engage in a productive technical dialogue um, aimed at uh, the shared goal of um, efficient, safe uh, energy transportation. And so underpinning our main concern is methane, and I'll give you a little bit background on that. And um, very simply, we care about pipelines because we care about methane. Uh, methane is the primary component in natural gas, and it's also a very powerful greenhouse gas. It's a um, short-term forcer, which means that it's 84 times as effective as CO2 at trapping heat in the two decades following its release. Total methane emissions from the transportation and storage sector make up about 20%, 18% of the entire natural gas industry, um, which means it, it can be a significant component of our total methane emissions in this country. And then emissions from gathering lines um, for the purposes of the greenhouse gas inventory are lumped into production sector emissions. 
and production sector emissions have been uh, increasing dramatically since about, um, well, since 1990. They've increased 31 percent, and that's in large part due to the shale gas boom and um, increased production and infrastructure necessary to move gas from the field to um, end recipients and processing. Um, so pipeline emissions come from both sort of routine and operational um, emissions and, and releases, as well as leaks and loss of integrity and accidents, which means that reducing methane emissions from pipelines is a huge win-win, right? Um, so the very same leaks and uh, emissions that uh, contribute to safety threats also threaten the climate. Um, so we think that activity in this sector, you know, really presents some great synergistic opportunities for policymakers, industry, and um, environmental advocates. The good news for us, and I think uh, everyone here, is that FIMSA already has substantial um, statutory and political authority to re regulate environmental risks from natural gas pipelines. And I'll pause here to acknowledge that FIMSA's safety mandate, um, of course, takes precedent. The environmental risks are urgent and they're important, but of course, you know, pipeline concerns are FIMSA's first and, and foremost uh, uh, priority, and, and we understand that. Um, but that said, FIMSA is expressly authorized in um, statutes, including the 1992 Pipeline Safety Act amendments, to consider environmental risks associated with um, energy transportation, and um, specifically, amendments in the 1992 uh, Act uh, delegate responsibility to the Office of Pipeline Safety for, among other things, requiring pipeline operation operators to submit reports on any condition that is a hazard to the environment, considering whether an operator's inspection and maintenance plan is sufficiently protective of the environment, and promulgating minimum standards for pipelines and facilities that are designed to protect the environment. And so these provisions and others indicate that um, FIMSA has, you know, ample statutory authority to fully integrate environmental risk management into their comprehensive regulatory regime. An exciting thing to note here um, is that Inga agrees, and uh, this quote is taken from page 179 of the uh, Inga comments to the um, pipeline safety, the gas pipeline safety transmission and gathering line and PRM. Um, and I'll let you read that, but the fact that this, you know, reducing methane emissions, reducing leaks from gas pipelines is a win-win uh, is exemplified in part because there is some stakeholder agreement on this point. And then um, uh, in addition to uh, FIMS's statutory authority to regulate environmental risks, um, there are uh, a series of executive um, actions that indicate there's political will behind that as well. Over the last three years, the Obama administration has consistently directed FIMSA to cooperatively work with other agencies on policies to limit methane emissions from the oil and gas sector. Uh, the White House's 2013 Climate Action Plan explicitly directed a specific group of agencies, including FIMSA, to develop a comprehensive interagency methane strategy and pursue a collaborative approach to reducing methane emissions. The 2014 White House Methane Strategy specifically identified a role for FIMSA in reducing methane emissions, including requiring pot pipeline operators to take steps to eliminate leaks and prevent accidental releases of methane. And also in 2015, the White House announced a goal of cutting methane emissions from the oil and gas sector by 40 to 45 percent um, from 2012 levels by 2025 and um, articulated a series of goals uh, to set the United States on the path to achieving that, those uh, methane emission reductions. Among the announced actions was to reduce methane emissions while improving public safety. The administration has also um, specifically noted the relevance of the recent uh, transmission and gathering line NPRM, um, stating that, quote, while pipeline safety standards will focus on safety, they are expected to lower methane emissions. 
So it's clear from both statutory language and recent um, executive actions that PHMSA has ample authority um, to really dig in here on reducing methane emissions uh, from natural gas pipelines to start chipping away at that one-fifth, that 20 percent of methane emissions that um, can be attributed to the transportation and storage sector. There are a few great examples of some policy win-wins here um, that can both enhance pipeline integrity and reduce methane emissions. Um, the first is the civil penalty policy just announced. The second is requiring mitigation measures for blowdown emissions. And the third is incentivizing advanced leak detection and um, analytics. So in the first, um, EDF was really excited to see methane emissions referenced in the most recent um, civil penalty policy articulation just released in the Federal Register, I think, two weeks ago, uh, a week ago. Um, in the notice, FIMSA indicated that based on existing authority, the agency intends to, and I'll quote it, give greater weight to certain factors when assessing civil penalties, specifically for violations that are causal to incidents or increase the severity of incidents, including those involving smaller hazardous liquid spills or resulting in methane emissions. Now this is great. This is a great way to leverage existing authority to deter methane emissions, and we're really excited to see um, when and how this is employed. The second example is from the um, Transmission and Gathering Line NPRM, uh, where FIMSA could require pipeline operators to mitigate blowdown emissions. Um, and uh, the, the, so routine pipeline and uh, venting and upsets in the transportation sector are a substantial source of methane. Um, they emit about 0.2 million metric tons per year, or about <coughs> the equivalent of a million cars. Uh, changes to MAOP verification requirements in the proposed rules included um, uh, or would require additional um, hydrostatic testing, which would um, increase blowdowns and potentially increase methane um, emissions. Anticipating this, the Pipeline Safety Trust and EDF commissioned an independent analysis by the consulting firm MJ Bradley um, to analyze the um, amount of additional blowdown emissions and identify potential mitigation measures. The MJ Bradley analysis uh, indicates that the proposed rule would increase annual transmission methane emissions attributed to routine venting and upsets by less than 1% and could increase total uh, transportation system methane emissions by less than 0.1%. And I think it's important that I, I'm not sugarcoating this one. Um, you know, I'm not going to trump up methane emissions that aren't there to, to sort of further environmental goals. These are the numbers. You know, go take a look at the study. Um, in this case, the methane emissions from these uh, integrity management uh, requirements, you know, the safety benefits just, you know, are really, they really prevail here. The really good news, though, is that the, about the majority of those emissions, about 50 to 90 percent of the incremental methane emissions from blowdowns that would be required under the new MAOP verification standards, can be cost effectively mitigated using uh, techniques that are currently available. This is a chart from the study and outlines the um, and mitigation measures identified by MJ Bradley after a literature review and conversations with uh, industry representatives. And um, of these, the uh, pressure reduction using inline compressors and diversion to lower pressure systems can actually result in net savings. Um, pressure reduction with mobile compressors and the use of stopples are considerably more expensive, but can be cost effective based on um, sort of key variables like the price of natural gas and the timeline of, uh, of return. So um, we think that's a, a very exciting development and a great policy op option. Um, MJ Bradley also uh, noticed and, and sort of uh, articulated in this report that not pursuing these blowdown emission mitigation measures could result in net societal loss of $13 million as a result of future climate change damage. 
So there, there are downsides of not pursuing these um, mitigation measures, and there are some upsides um, financially as well as, um, as well as for the environment. And so to, to avoid the downsides, uh, FINSA could and should leverage its environmental authority to um, reduce methane emissions associated with the MAOP verifications that would be required under the new rule um, by requiring the use, or at least the <coughs> consideration of use, of these cost-effective uh, mitigation measures uh, in the new subpart 506. And then the final example of an opportunity to leverage FIMSA's existing environmental authority to reduce methane emissions um, would be incentivizing the deployment of uh, advanced leak detection and analytical methods. There are new um, methane leak detection technologies on the market that are a thousand times more sensitive than traditional systems, and that is not hyperbole. And equally important, there are also new analytical methods that can help operators um, incorporate all of this new data as well as existing data into you know very usable um, formats for prioritizing leak to prioritizing capital investments um, and and repair for example the price waterhouse cooper report issued in april of 2016 described um, their new way uh, that helps operators identify um, citizen calls and other sort of qualitative data that they have on hand and, um, and sort of spatially attribute that data so that they can um, uh, sort of have a framework for analyzing all of the data that comes in and uh, really prioritize the right areas that will make um, meaningful differences in terms of um, you know, really leveraging their uh, repair and capital improvement budget. We think that um, analytical methods like these combined with advanced leak detection can really improve pipeline performance and decrease emissions from leaks and accidental releases. PG&E and CenterPoint uh, are already adopting some of the methods described in the PricewaterhouseCoopers report, uh, but FIMSA can continue to incentivize um, the deployment of advanced leak detection and analytical methods um, through including uh, references to these methods in the current transportation and gas pipeline safety rule and uh, in, in future rules that we anticipate will uh, address um, rupture detection and perhaps leak detection. So just, just really, you know, to, to recap, EDF is concerned about pipelines because we're concerned about methane, and FIMSA has significant environmental authority that we would like to see them leverage to reduce methane emissions from natural gas pipelines. If you have questions about the studies I referenced, um, there's a lot in, in both of them that I didn't mention, particular, I mean, both of them are really great resources. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, thanks so much. <laughs>